Neglectful parents demanded that I give them my grandfather's trust fund for their business, or they would throw me out of the house. So, I ran away from home at 18. Hi, so I just turned 18 a couple of weeks ago and I have been in a tiff with my parents ever since over a trust fund that my grandfather had left for me and I was not even aware of it until I came of age. I am a girl and I have been living away from my parents for the last few weeks because of what they did and right now, my parents are calling me greedy but I don't even know what makes me greedy for wanting to save for my future. My grandparents and I had always been close because I kind of grew up living with them, instead of my parents, because they were always away for work for most of my childhood and I used to live with my grandparents until the age of 14. My father was a project manager for a construction company and my mother traveled with him wherever he went. They thought that it would be too much of a hassle for them to take me along everywhere with them, so they chose to let me live with my grandparents so that I would have some sort of stability in my life as a child but I really think they were just not interested in taking me along with them because taking care of a child a huge responsibility and they did not want me tagging along. But then, my dad decided to quit his job a few years ago and then he finally came back here, to settle down. But even then, they did not take me back and I ended up living with my grandparents for about another two years more, even though my dad had quit his job and was setting up his own restaurant business right here since both he and my mother loved to cook. It was kind of sad because my other friends, and pretty much everyone that I knew, lived with their parents. Don't get me wrong, I love my grandparents and always will but I just felt like they did not want me and that was not a good feeling. Because what kind of child would ever want to experience that? Nobody wants to feel like their own parents don't want them around but unfortunately, that's how I felt for most of my childhood and even for a couple of my teenage years. It was not like I did not have any contact with my parents at all because that would have been weird. But it was not enough love and affection that I received from them, even when they were around, to make up for the time that we were not together. They would return to the city for holidays and my birthdays every year without fail and we would celebrate as a family but it felt like it was more of an obligation or a duty than something they were doing out of love for me. And even when they would be back here, I didn't exactly feel very connected to them because they didn't make any effort or take any extra measures to remind me that I actually meant something to them. And it was all just a little too casual and didn't feel enough. They would ask me how school was going and stuff about my friends but it was so formal, it was like they were forcing themselves to make conversation with me, as if I was their business associate not literally their child. I guess what I'm trying to say is that my parents were not the best that I could have had and I don't think that I would say they did a decent job of raising me. Because to be honest, they did not raise me at all and it was my grandparents who did so. My parents, well, maybe they are legally listed as my parents everywhere but I never felt any real connection with them and it always broke my heart. But that's how it was and I could not help it because they did not seem interested in building a relationship with me either. And that is not an assumption that I'm making but I actually know it for a fact because of certain things that I heard when I was younger. I think I must have been around 12 when it happened but it was my birthday, I remember that, and I remember everybody had gone home after the party and only my parents had stuck around since they were going to spend the night here before they left and went back to their own house the next morning. I was living with my grandparents at the time and I was about to go up to my room but I heard sounds of shouting from my grandfather's office and I realized that my entire family was in there because nobody else seemed to be outside. I couldn't help myself, so I decided to eavesdrop on them because I was curious to know what they were fighting about, since my grandfather was usually a very calm and relaxed guy but that day, I could hear him shouting like never before. Now, I really wish I hadn't because what I heard really got to me because I haven't been able to move on from that to this day. I could hear my grandfather yelling and he was saying that it was very unfair, the way that my parents were treating me and it was seriously going to affect our relationship in the future, which they should really think about. Because my grandparents were not going to be around for long and eventually, we would be stuck with each other. He was referring to the fact that my father had quit his job and no longer needed to travel for work but in spite of that, he had not even offered to take me back home with them and was still making me live with my grandparents. They made it clear that they did not have a problem with me living with them and loved me dearly but it was not good for a child to have such a strange and disconnected relationship with their parents and he believed that it was necessary for my parents to make more of an effort be around me and actually step up as my mother and father. And to that, my father said that I seemed happy enough living with my grandparents and he did not have enough time to be running around trying to be your father when he was trying to run the restaurant and be successful for the future. Neither did my mother have the time or energy to be a mother when she already had so much on her plate, trying to help my father run their business and also doing all the work around the house. The responsibility of another person was the last thing that they needed and they told my grandfather that as long as they were trying to set the business up, I was not their first priority and we would just all have to deal with it. I remember crying myself to sleep that night and I think that was my worst birthday ever because even though the evening of the birthday party was lovely, what I heard that night was not something that I could ever forget and I haven't. I know for a fact that my parents don't think of me as a priority but rather as something more like a responsibility, that has been thrust upon them and they have not exactly been willing to take it up either. That was the point at which I decided that I was never going to have any expectations from my parents because it had become very clear to me that if I ever expected anything from them I would only be disappointed and I didn't want that. And I did have my grandparents at the time, so it seemed doable and I was ready to face everything but unfortunately, even that did not last for long.
As you guys might have figured out by now, I had to move in with my parents because my grandparents passed away, one after the other in the same year. I lost them both during the pandemic four years ago and it has been incredibly tough for me to learn how to live without them. My grandfather had diabetes so he passed away first and after nine months, I lost my grandmother as well. It was a devastating time for me and I think I was depressed but I can't say for sure. The only thing that I knew for sure was that I did not want to do anything all day and I would just stay in my room and only come out to eat when I felt hungry. But other than that, I would only just watch TV shows or sleep during the day and cry myself to sleep during the night. I was literally living like a zombie after my grandparents passed away and I hated the fact that I had to live with my parents but unfortunately, I did not have anywhere else to go and obviously, if my parents were alive then I had to live with them. I started resenting them and I know it's not the right thing but I started wishing that they were the ones who had passed away, rather than my grandparents. I was that depressed and torn up about their demise. Obviously, there was something very wrong with me at the time and I was pretty sure that I needed to see a psychiatrist at the very least, but my parents did not think it was necessary and I wasn't even surprised because they did not care about anything apart from themselves. At the time when I was depressed, they did not even try to talk to me or get us out of my room because they were just busy worrying about themselves since it had barely been any time since they had opened up their restaurant and they already had two shut down. It was not even as though they did not have any savings and I knew pretty well that my dad had made a lot of money at his previous job and apart from that, they had sold everything that belonged to my grandparents after they passed away and had even inherited quite a large sum of money from them since my grandfather was also quite well off, so they had enough money for the next few months and did not have anything to worry about. But still, it did not seem worthwhile to them to care about me and at least just ask me if I was doing alright. So I continued to rot in my room and my hatred towards my parents just kept getting worse because I couldn't accept the fact that the only two people who cared about me were gone and I was now stuck with these people, who never even bothered to check on me, even when I refused to come out of my room for days. I could literally disappear and they would still not notice until it was too late. I was just so upset that even talking about it that's me worked up because of how terrible and suffocating it felt to be living with them. So that is how life was up until a couple of years ago but then things started getting better eventually, like they usually do and I started getting better as well. I started opening up to my friends and told them about how I did not feel any connection with my parents I had expected them to judge me for it but as a matter of fact, it was a pleasant surprise to realize that they were actually quite sympathetic towards me and told me that they would be there for me no matter what. Especially Olivia, my best friend ever since I was in kindergarten, she has always been there for me and she has known everything. She even told her parents about my life and what I was going through and they told me that I could come to them for help anytime I had to and that their door was always open for me. It honestly meant a lot to hear that from them. Things started getting better for me in the past two years and even though my parents were still quite indifferent to me and my troubles, I had learned to deal with them on my own with a little help from my friends and I was getting by. I had decided not to go to college this year, even though most of my friends were, but I wanted to get a job and gain some real world experience and I could always go to college the next year. I had known that I did not have to rely on my parents for tuition money and I was aware that my grandfather had set up a college fund for me, which I would gain access to once I enrolled somewhere and I had to speak to my grandparents' lawyer for since I would actually have to show proof of the fact that I had actually been accepted since the fund that they had left for me was intended specifically for my college tuition and nothing else. That much had been made clear to me by my grandfather because as much as he loved me, he also believed in discipline and I get what he meant because his son definitely did not inherit that from him. But a couple of weeks ago, their lawyer actually got in touch with me and I told him that I did not need the college fund right now because I was going to work for a year before I went to college and then, he broke the news to me that alongside the college fund, I also had a trust fund that I would get access to when I was 18 and that was meant to be a surprise for me. My grandparents were supposed to be around when I was told but unfortunately, they were not and that responsibility then came to him to let me know about it. That was just a day after my birthday and I was really emotional so I decided to make a post about it and write something to thank my grandfather who was always looking out for me even when he was no longer here, and my grandmother, who loved me and made sure that I was always cared for. Because I really missed them and I thought that making a post would help me process my feelings and since I could not say these things to them directly, I was just putting it out into the world and expressing my feelings. Big mistake, I should have just kept it private because I should have guessed that as soon as my parents found out about it, they would start hounding me to share the funds with them. Somehow they found out about that post, probably some relative of mine told them about it because neither of my parents is very active on social media and I don't have them at it. The day after I made that post, my parents came up to me and started telling me that they had read the post and they thought that it was very sweet, what my grandfather did for me. I instantly knew something was fishy because first of all, it is very rare for my parents to actually approach me to talk to me, you guys must have figured that out by the details that I have mentioned earlier. And secondly, they were talking about something that had to do with money and I did not have a good feeling about it. So I just kept quiet and I didn't say anything and let them do all the talking because I wanted to know where they were going with that. And just as I had expected, they started telling me that they were planning to expand the restaurant business but there were not enough funds to do so and if I helped them out with the money, it would be really cool of me. Naturally, I asked him how they could not have enough funds, because as far as I knew, their business was going well and they had enough savings. 
So they told me that by the availability of funds, they meant that they could not bring any investor on board right now because they did not think it was the right time to sell shares, and they also did not want to invest more money by themselves since there was no guarantee that it would pay off later. So they were asking me to give them money since that would be the easiest solution. I could not make any demands to come on board as an investor and they would not have to sell any shares. And neither would they have to invest their own money, so basically what they were looking for was an investment from someone who did not expect anything in return and was just throwing their money away. I can't believe they actually thought that I would be that stupid. I told them that I was not going to do anything like that and that if they wanted a free investment, or rather a handout, which is actually what it was that they were asking for, they were better off asking one of their friends or other family members. Because this money was going to go towards my future and that's what my grandfather had intended, so I don't understand why they would even expect me to let them have that money, even any amount of it. And it was not even as though they could do with just a couple thousand grands but they actually wanted the entire fund for themselves, which was just crazy to me. If they wanted to expand their business, they could get an investor on board and sell some shares or they could invest their own money or they could take a loan. They could do everything the proper way instead of expecting me to let them have my money, it didn't even make sense. I was very stubborn and I told them that I was not doing it and they seemed to be getting more and more agitated the more I declined to help them. So after one point, my father got so annoyed that he told me that I could either help him out or I could leave because I was being selfish and there was no place for selfishness in this house. I thought that was very rich coming from them, the people who had been the most selfish and had never bothered to ever think about me their entire lives. My mother told me that I could either share the funds with them or I could get out of their house because anyway, I was an adult now and they were not obligated to take care of me or let me live with them. And since I was so grown up that I could make decisions for myself, I could make the choice about whether I wanted to help my parents or not. And the choice would have consequences, just like in the real world. They thought that they were being completely fair but they did not anticipate what I would do next. I don't know why, but they had actually got it into their head that I would not be able to survive without them. I don't understand why they would think such a thing event so far, I had been doing just fine without any of their help. They only ever did the bad minimum for me and I was used to not expecting anything from them. So even now, when they told me that I had to leave if I did not help them, I made it clear to myself that after this, I could no longer live with them because this was just insulting. I did not say anything to them to their face but I told them that I would think about it and let them know the next day. But that next day never came because I ran away from home that night and started living with my best friend. I had already explained the situation to Olivia and her parents after my parents had spoken to me and given me an ultimatum. They were very understanding about it, they told me that I could live with them for as long as I needed to, and they would be glad to have me. So that was all sorted and I did not want to engage with my parents or even talk to them because I knew that if I told them that I was leaving, there would be another whole thing about it and I did not need that. So I just left without a word, because I don't think I needed to explain anything to them. I did not owe it to them to say anything when I was leaving because they had done nothing to deserve an explanation. And yet, when they found out that I had left, they actually had the audacity to be mad at me. I don't know why but they were upset that I had chosen to leave, even though it was they who had said that I would have to leave and they would make me if I did not share my wealth with them. The next day, they called me a thousand times, and only in the evening did I answer their call. When they asked me about where I was, they did not even sound worried. They did not seem to care about the fact that their only daughter had left the house in the middle of the night and had not responded to them all day. The only questions that they asked me had to do with the funds and what I was going to do with them. It was just so disappointing but honestly, I was used to this now. So I told them that I had made up my mind and I was not going to share the money with them. I was not that charitable and honestly, they did not need my charity. So it was fair. I told them that I had already mentioned that I was not interested in giving them handouts because they had always made it very clear to me that I was not their priority and right now, they were not mine either. Now that my grandparents were gone, I had to look out for myself and that's what I was going to do. I'm pretty sure that the only reason they had even left me this sort of money was so that I would be able to take care of myself after they were gone. Because even they were aware of the kind of parents that I had. And I was not going to help them, that was my final decision. And since then, they have been losing their minds about it because they think that I am being exceptionally greedy and are talking crap about me to everybody. All of my relatives and my parents' friends have been reaching out to me, to tell me that I am being really greedy and that they did not expect something like this from me. It is really annoying but it's also really making me think if I'm actually being greedy or not. Of course, Olivia and her parents don't think so but I think I need somebody with objective eyes to comment on this and get me to realize that I'm not crazy and that what I'm doing is justified. So, Ida for not wanting to share my trust fund with my parents who had been absent for most of my life? Update 1, hi, and thank you so much for all the lovely comments. You guys are really sweet for saying such nice things about my grandparents. I'm sure that if they were reading this, they would be really happy. Now coming to the point, I decided to really hit back at everybody who had been reaching out to me just to tell me that I was wrong. I don't even know why I was taking these people seriously because they don't know me, they only know my parents and their side of it. And the worst part is that they are not even interested in getting to know me or my side of the story, they just made up their mind from whatever my parents told them. 
which, of course, they did because when it comes to a fight between parents and a child, most people want to believe that the parents are right. But I highly doubt that this is the case here. And I'm kind of certain that some people only got involved because they wanted a taste of the drama that's going on. They don't care about me or my parents, they just want an opportunity to let me hear it so they can vent out their own frustrations. And I was not going to deliver this anymore because whatever is going on that's between me and my parents and they have no right to comment on it. I know that my parents put them up to it and maybe they are okay with it but I am not, so if they can dish it out, they should be able to take it as well. So I made a post, saying that anybody who is supporting my parents, should actually be the ones to invest in their business since they want to be so supportive. And I think that will do them a lot more good than bullying me into sharing my trust fund with them. I also put out a public message to my parents, saying that their strategy to make me feel bad really wasn't working because all it did was make me even more determined to not help them out because they were manipulative, selfish, and could not think about anything beyond themselves. I was unlucky enough to have them as my parents but I was not stupid enough to keep in touch with them after what they had said. They were the ones who had given me the choice to either share the trust fund with them or leave, and I had chosen to leave. I think that just makes me independent. If anybody is greedy in this situation, that's them. Not me. So that was that and after that, I decided to turn off my phone because I was not interested in anything that anybody had to say beyond that point. I had said whatever I wanted to say and I had even tagged the people who had messaged me earlier, to let them know what I thought. And I'm sure that they were going to pass on the message to my parents as well, so I was fine with everything. Now, I have to focus on finding a job and an apartment for myself because as much as I love my best friend and her parents, I don't want to be a burden on them and overstay my welcome. They have told me several times that I can stay with them for as long as I want to but I think I need to draw the boundary somewhere. I can't go from depending on my grandparents and then to depend on my parents and then now, on Olivia and her parents. I had to do something for myself and now that I had the money from the trust fund, it would be a lot easier. So wish me luck. Update 2, lol, it's been 4 days since I made that post online and obviously everybody whom I had attacked has blocked me now. Good for them, I'm sure that they would not have liked it if I took things even further. And obviously, they did it by passing on the message to my parents and letting them know what I had said about them. And my parents are pretty pissed off about it like I care. I can understand that they are mad at me but I just don't understand why they feel the need to let me know about it because I think I have made it abundantly clear that I don't care and I never will. But anyway, they sent me a message and told me that they were officially cutting me out of their life and they don't want to hear from me ever again. I just replied saying that they won't have to because I'm not interested in talking to them and block them. All I have to say about that is good riddance. Anyway, the search for the apartment is going well and I have even finalized one. I'm going to be living with a roommate and splitting the rent and I think that will be very responsible of me. I'm really excited to embark on this new journey and I can't wait to see what the future holds for me. Update 3, Hi, Guys. So I finally moved out of Olivia's house and we were sad to let each other go but even she was leaving for college in a couple of weeks and I had to settle into my new apartment before the search for a new roommate began. We had a lot to do and it was kind of bittersweet. But anyway, moving on to better news, I got a job. I'm going to be working in the social media marketing department of an advertisement agency and fingers crossed, I'm hoping that it goes well. I have not been in touch with my parents for the last couple of weeks and it's been great. I barely even think about them because I'm so busy. Life is good and I hope I can make my grandparents feel proud.